Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Allow me, as a way of introduction to my contribution this morning, to congratulate Asus Mota and the Leather Consortium for the time conference you are actually holding today in the coming days. Furthermore, I'd like to congratulate the Consortium for coming together to develop and to increase the action of local authorities and civil society in European Union development and awareness raising policies. By doing this, you are truly being agents of change, primarily by informing, raising awareness and engaging citizens on the challenges that the world is facing today. One of the, these major challenges is undoubtedly that of migration. The choice of the topic of your conference today is very opportune as it is, as it coincides with the EU African Summit being held here in Malta, which hopefully the outcomes would, true, would be truly historic as we wait eagerly for the much needed changes in attitude, in approach, in strategy and in policies by policy actors across Europe and Africa. I am also pleased that you are bringing together local government and civil society on an issue that should concern us all as it affects us all in one way or another. I hope that your deliberations in Berlin will bear fruit and be an example of good practice both locally and throughout Europe. I take this opportunity to encourage you to strive to make Malta a model of best practice for Europe and beyond. Indeed, 2015 is a year of unique importance within the migration and development context. It is a watershed year where the Sustainable Development Goals were finally endorsed by the international community after long deliberations. However, it is also the year where migration flows changed and are now affecting massively mainland Europe, resulting in an unprecedented influx of migrants and refugees from Africa, the Middle East and Asia. It is also the year where we are seeing once more unprecedented loss of life and tragedies that continue to touch the lives of many directly and indirectly. Some weeks ago, during the adoption of the Sustainable Development Goals, when addressing the United Nations Summit, I reminded fellow leaders that these are days of great importance, not only for us who were in New York, in New York but more so for the rest of the seven billion people that make up our human family. I emphasized that in the decades to come, we will be judged by future generations on the choices of strategies and policies we are making together now and on the commitments we are undertaking as an international community. Definitely, we will be judged on how many people will be elevated from poverty, on how many of us will have better access to healthcare, on the improved availability of water and sanitation, on the provision of sustainable economic growth, on the action we are taking in response to climate change, and on our, on our efforts to secure just, peaceful and inclusive societies. More importantly, I believe that we will be judged by how we are treating fellow human beings in need of help and protection. To me, the focus on the poorest and the most vulnerable is the crux of this very moment in time and to my mind includes people on the move, particularly as I am seeking migrants. Migration is fueled by inequality and poverty, by lack of food and water security, by economic factors such as unemployment, by lack of sustainable practices, by climate change, conflict and war. Thankfully, 
These are all priorities now embedded in the Sustainable Development Goals. At the United Nations Summit in September, it was indeed a special moment to observe the international community with all member states and stakeholders have come together and have agreed to care for the most vulnerable amongst us, including migrants. Now that the international community has agreed to the goals, the next step is undoubtedly to take effective action on global level, on regional level, and on community level. Migration is a cross-cutting issue in the three dimensions of sustainable development. The economic, social, and environmental dimensions all impinge on migration. This is why I believe that any discourse on sustainable development must include migration as a cornerstone. It is with great satisfaction that I see this concern included in the Sustainable Development Goals. And I take the opportunity to commend everyone involved for having the courage and the vision to acknowledge this from a human rights standpoint. The adoption of the post-2015 agenda undoubtedly made headlines throughout the world. Nonetheless, those same headlines also included grim stories about migrants and their often thwarted journey in search for better lives. News bulletins in Europe are reporting the horrific loss of human life on a daily basis. Unfortunately, and I say this with a heavy heart, human rights are all too often sidelined and ignored. In this context, effective action must be taken immediately and without any further delay. Unfortunately, too much time has been lost in passivity that resulted into the Mediterranean region and mainland Europe facing an unprecedented situation. Now is the time for a turning point. A turning point which hopefully would mean a new beginning for so many countless people. There are many factors that influence migration flows towards Europe. Many a time, the bull factor is the opportunities that exist in Western societies that offer hope of a better life. For some, they offer the promise of life itself. In the minds of these helpless people, these opportunities are seen as strong economies that generate jobs and create prosperity. These opportunities are seen from the benefits that European countries have achieved from coming together to form free trade areas, economic partnerships, and shared trade policies. These European partner countries realize it is imperative that barriers between one another are eliminated and that policies which encourage collaboration and an end and unhindered flow of trade are accepted as the best way forward. Undoubtedly, for Europeans, this outlook has proved largely successful. It creates economic growth, promotes development, strengthens trust between and ties with trading partners and impacts positively on the day-to-day -day lives of people and businesses. It positions European economies as some of the biggest and most influential global players in international trade and investment. This approach is also seen as a way out of economic crises delivering lower prices, greater consumer choice, and ultimately, a higher standard of living. This economic reality, unhindered and free, without barriers or borders, a success on so many fronts, is nonetheless in stark contrast with our current policies on migration. Policies on migration adopted by Western societies are based on a markedly different set of principles. Indeed, existing migration policies seek to hinder and stop this collective sense of cooperation and mutual benefit for all. Instead of reflecting policies that promote free trade 
and an open economy, migration policies crush all hopes of freedom. This is an essential point I wish to share with you today in the context of sustainable development goals and hence to further stimulate your thoughts and deliberations. I ask, why are we failing to recognize that migration can be a positive process and in particular value? Why are we failing to adopt migration policies that facilitate the movement of people rather than restrict them? Why are we putting up walls instead of building bridges? <laughs> Let us hope the EU African Summit on Migration, taking place today and tomorrow in Valletta, will bring about much needed change in attitudes, strategies, and policies. My hopes are high as I yearn for effective action and positive outcomes. Human migration has always played a part in the story of our world. It will always exist because of humankind's inherent nature and the going impact on our planet. Hence, we are, why are European peoples afraid of their historic reality? Why are many of our governments and policy actors not helping with this realization of humankind's reality. I believe that it is up to us to influence the way we deal with migration and the policies our, our governments choose to adopt. These policies must be rooted in fundamental human rights, linked with, with economic and trade policies that affirm and celebrate the spirit of the United Nations and European Covenants. The demographic change that is underway in many Western societies is one example of the kind of issues that governments must increasingly take into consideration. For instance, in Europe there are real concerns that there will not be enough workers with the right set of skills to replace people approaching retirement. Research and statistics consist consistently illustrate the fact that migration boosts the working age population. They show that many migrants arrive with skills that facilitate substantial contributions to human capital development. In the context of the labor market, Migrants also play vital roles in both declining and fast-growing sectors of the economy. In essence, migrants not only help through their taxes and social contributions, but they also contribute significantly to labor market flexibility. The, fact, the facts paint a very different picture from the distorted scenarios some political actors would have us believe. Some of these actors choose to capitalize on people's anxieties and spread deliberate misinformation so as to be populistic with the result that subsequently incite hatred and instill fear. Understanding the true impact of migration is crucial if we are to debate the topic in a constructive and fruitful way. Such debates are imperative because they help shape the design of strategies and policies directly engaging with the processes of migration. I believe that an effective information strategy needs to be put in place, raising awareness about the reality facing migrants and providing a true picture of facts. And here, I appeal to you as a consortium concerned primarily with advocating for awareness raising policies to be put in place to stress the importance of having correct and adequate information about the reality of migration and indeed migrants. Misinformation and misconceptions can only lead to fear of the unknown, while in your own words, initiatives to raise awareness about the migration issue encourage tolerance and solidarity towards asylum seekers and beneficiaries of protection. 
This is an effective way to fight racism, xenophobia, and all kinds of discrimination against migrants across Europe. We must reflect on the lessons learned from economic and trade policies, namely the need for collaboration, partnership, facilitated movement, and no trade borders or barriers. We must think of how these have resulted in great prosperity for us. We must now be just as generous with people's lives. We must come to imagine a world where migrants are embraced rather than pushed. Once this is achieved, we may truly nurture a world where peace and well-being can thrive. We will be in a position to civilly discuss our differences in societies that celebrate diversity and opportunities for all humanity. I have to stress the importance, the important role of civil society that is so essential to effectively address migration and development. Civil society is key as it operates at grassroots level and it is often more in touch with realities than governments and policy makers might be. Our approach to migration has to be in a realistic, comprehensive and proactive manner. Migration is an ongoing issue. Migration flows, push and pull factors may change. Hence the dire need to be proactive and not passive. Passivity has brought on a crisis which affects people in a negative and thwarted manner. In this context, it, 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 it is so essential to acknowledge the important role of civil society for governments giving its input in the crucial issue that affects us all. In conclusion, I reiterate the need to move from rhetoric to, a, to effective action at all levels. There is the need to transcend economic policies to make them relevant to people's lives. There is the need to ensure the safety of people on the move. And last but not least, there is the need for effective information strategies that portray the true picture of migrants as human beings in search of a better life for themselves and their families. All these strategies and policies have to be constructed within a human rights context as laid down in the European values we treasure so much. Finally, I wish you all a successful conference and outcomes to your deliberations.